Kim from Low Range Griffons. Thanks for stopping by today. We're gonna do a little video on how to groom your wire hair pointing Griffon. This is Hula. She's gonna be eight months old tomorrow, and I'm gonna show you how to take care of her puppy coat. Now, uh, Griffon has a double coat. They have a harsh outer layer that's wiry, which is why they're called wire hair pointing Griffons. It should never be curly or wooly, straight and wiry. Although sometimes a puppy coat will have a little curl in it before they get their adult coat. Now the undercoat is soft and dense and the undercoat is what makes up these soft facial furnishings of the Griffon that give them the look we like so well. Um, the unkempt look, they say. So. On the ears, it's kind of a mixture between undercoat and outer coat. The legs have shorter hair than the hair on the back. It's fairly wiry, not quite as hard as the coat on the back. And the tail has the same outer coat as on the back. So it doesn't take very many tools to take care of a Griff's coat. It's pretty easy to take care of. I like to spray water on the coat before I work on it, just to prevent any breakage. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And I'm gonna go ahead and hook Hula up to the grooming arm, with this loop. And one thing I like to do is feed lots of treats while I'm grooming, because I want her to enjoy this. It's something that she's gonna have to put up with for her whole life. So we might as well make it enjoyable for both of us. All right. So one of the tools I use is just a stainless steel comb. It's wider on one end, closer together on the other. Just take it through the coat. It's important to groom your griff whenever you come in from the field. Make sure they haven't picked up any grass or plant matter or sticks or any kind of things that may cause a problem later. And just pull out whatever hair you get. Now, for her face, let's spray her a little bit. Just comb her. using the same comb. Now, sometimes the hair on the ears can get long to where it's grown down longer than the actual ear. And I like to keep that trimmed up even with the edge of the ear. Um, I think it looks neater, it prevents getting into uh, the food dish and the water dish all the time. Um, other stuff they might get into in the field. And I do show a hula, so I don't want her ears to kind of overpower her. She shouldn't have ears that look like big, long basset hound ears. Um, so I'll do a video in the future on how I trim those up. Uh, it's not very complicated. It's pretty simple. Just takes some time. There. She's got very abundant furnishings. So I also may go through and strip out some of this hair on her face uh, to make sure it's, it's not like overpowering her, her features. Come here, Hula. Can you stand up? So all these areas uh, on the underbody are where you really need to check for burrs and things like that like in the armpits, um, 
the hair is softer then it will tend to be a place where those kind of things will collect grasses and stuff and it can cause a problem if you don't get it out so we want to check all that area along the inside of the legs now grooming the legs I just do with the comb as well She can't stand on the leg that I'm combing, apparently. Okay. Good girl. And I also like to neaten up the feet so there isn't a lot of excess long hair down around the feet, um, which also just pulls up debris, um, makes them track in more dirt and mud. And uh, it looks a lot neater when it's trimmed up. So a good tool for that is just this stripping blade. You just kind of go around the edges. She's helping me. And take out the hair a little bit at a time until you get the the foot neatened up. Also, the grips have hair between their toes, which I use scissors to, to trim out. That will track mud balls and snowballs, um, things like that, and it's best to trim that out. So, one important part of grooming is nail trimming. Now, I like to use the grinder to do nails. And I'm going to go ahead and put who was rear end into a loop on this other grooming arm so I have more control of her while I do her nails. She sometimes is not interested in cooperating with this process, but it has to be done. It's very important to your dog's health that their nails are done regularly. Uh, if they're allowed to get too long, they can split, they can even cause problems in the way the dog moves. Um, it can cause problems on hardwood floors and tile floors, make their feet slippery if their nails are too long. So it's very important. I just use a Dremel grinder. It's a battery operated. It takes four AA batteries. I've had this for about 10 years. Um, turn it on, it doesn't hurt. If it gets caught up on anything, it just stops moving. Um, I do have a diamond groove head on this Dremel, which um, makes the process a lot faster. So the way I do it is I bring her front legs underneath her body and trim them from the opposite side or grind them. It gives me a little bit more control over her foot. You have to be careful that you don't grind too long because it will get hot. Good girl. And I really want to reward this. Um, because nail, nails can be a real pain if your dog isn't cooperative. I kind of hold on to the toe and the nail that I'm working on to try to decrease the vibration a little bit. Good girl. Good puppy. Yes, good girl. All right. I know you can't really see what I'm doing. But I think this way of positioning the foot is really helpful and gives me more control than holding her foot out in front of her. Good girl.
Good girl. Back feet can be kind of awkward to do, so I kind of hold those up like uh, cleaning our horses up. Let's take off the end and try to smooth it out so there aren't any sharp edges. give a lot of praise. I'm using these Zooks um, mini treats for this. I like these. They're really handy. They're small. Um, you don't make a mess in your pocket. You can run them through the washer and dryer and the dog will still eat them. I've done that before. I'm going to take this loop off her hind end and I'll show you another tool that I use to strip coat it. This is called a Mars Coat King. This one's three and a half inches wide. It's kind of sharp here on the end so you want to be careful that you don't press down too hard. I've cut myself with them before. And this one is an inch and a half wide that I use like on the legs. <laughs> okay, let me go around to this side. So what this does is a rake and it'll rake out the dead hair from her coat. And the way to use it is to spray down with water and then start here at the base of her back by her tail. And just start combing through just a little section at a time and work up higher on her back each time you go over. Some people do all this stripping by hand. I don't like to do that. Um, I'd rather use the rake. And when we say stripping on a griff, we're just pulling out dead hairs. Um, on some breeds of terrier, they're stripping uh, the dog in a pattern, like say, um, making all the hair on the back really short. We're not trying to do any kind of a pattern, uh, anything other than their natural look. We're just taking out uh, the dead, the dead coat. Um, some people think that griffs don't shed, but they do. Although they don't seasonally blow coats, like in the spring, the way a golden retriever or a lab would do, uh, they do cast off hairs. And anything I can get off right here, I don't have to sweep up off the floor. So that is how I use the coat cane. Then I would use the smaller one on areas like the legs. Son of a
shows quite a bit of coat on her hips. So then I'll just take some of that out. Now I also uh, like to neaten up <laughs> the rear legs and hocks and feet. But I will do another video and show you how I do that. Uh, one thing about grooming, you don't have to do it all at once. She's getting a little restless right now. So it's best to just end on a positive note um, and come back and do some of the things that I missed today at a, on another day or later today. <laughs> so this is Kim and Hula saying thanks for watching and we'll have another video coming your way soon. Please like and subscribe. Bye.